Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think we're back up and running. So, okay, so it had a glitch. Hey, wait a minute. I am currently running my entire house off grid right now. And this has to be one of the easiest options for getting power to run an entire house. I have 12,000 watts of output between these two units, which means running an electric dryer or an electric water heater, air conditioning, all of those become possibilities because this is such a powerful system. We're gonna go over exactly why I like the Anchor Solux F3800, as well as some of the drawbacks of it that you need to be aware of. And one of the reasons there's so much background noise going on right now is this system is running my entire house, as well as this crypto miner right here and fans and charging up another solar generator. And it's doing it without any problem at all, but that causes some noise to be in the background. Now you guys have seen me do some videos about the Anchor Solux F3800 as a single unit. Now there are two units joined together through this hub. And this is one of the reasons why I like the F3800 is I can expand it using this hub to get 12,000 watts of output. But even more impressive than that is the fact that I have nothing else plugged into this unit right here. And it is balancing with this unit right here. Let me show you when I got this hooked up, what happened. When I originally called Anchor Solix to talk to their customer service, first of all, they answered very quickly and seemed very competent on the phone. It was an English speaking person as their first language and they were very helpful. But one of the questions that I had was about this special combiner here. So this is Anchor Solix's hub for their F3800. It allows me to join these two systems together. The question that I had was, if I'm using power off of unit two, will unit one send power over to unit two in order to keep the whole system balanced? Because the only way that I can get 12,000 watts of output from this is if both units are running. But if one unit goes down because it's using more power than the other, then the problem becomes that I only get 6,000 watts of output from this. It may not be a deal breaker, but it's good to know, for example, if you need to run a water heater as well as a well pump or a dryer or any heavy electric load, then you don't want to get reduced down to 6,000 watts of output because a typical clothes dryer even would use about 5,500 watts. Even water heaters will go anywhere from about 4,500 watts to 9,000 watts of output. And that's obviously gonna exceed this if one of these systems goes down. Right now, I have this hub connected to the two units and I'm pulling a large load from unit two right here. I wanna see if when we turn this on, if we can continue to run our 120 volt loads. That 120 volts is just your normal wall outlet. Basically, I'm running 2,400 watts of power there. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Now it says power station, power station. This is on, yep. And unfortunately we just lost power to that. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think we're back up and running. So, hey, wait a minute. This is working. This is outputting a thousand watts. This is outputting a thousand watts. We have 2000 watts of output split between these. Uh, this device right here, it's a crypto miner, is getting queued up. It uses 600 watts, so it's not running yet. We were using about 24, 2500 watts. So that must be the difference is that's not going just yet. So if we wait a minute, that should get going and these should go up and that should balance it. Actually, it's going up right now. Now we're up to 1100 watts on each one, 1200 watts on each, this is freaking working. No way. Okay, the reason I'm so excited is there's only been one other solar generator on the entire market that allows for this balancing act to happen, and that's the Apollos. So the fact that the Anchor Solux F3800 is able to do this and just doing it through a simple hub like this, I don't need a ton of cables running all over the place. That's pretty freaking awesome. And it's incredible that it's coming all out of here, but energy is transferring from one to two to run all of this. That, I. I'm truly impressed. That is really, really cool. Now, I know someone's gonna ask, so in terms of crypto, this is a KA Box Pro. It's a Caspa miner. Um, it's similar to the Cadena miners that I oftentimes run. That's what I'm running up here, which is making all of that noise. Um, but the Caspa is a different coin that I like to mine, and you can run it off of any 120 volt outlet. So here's how the math works out. Between these two units, we have 7.7 .7 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. Let's say I was just running the Caspa miner. It uses 600 watts or 0.6 kilowatts. So that means I could run that Caspa miner for 12.8 hours or 13 hours nonstop. 
and that's not factoring in the efficiency of the inverter. So it may be closer to 12 or 11 hours. And the reason I like this example is 600 watts continuous is the same as running, for example, two refrigerators and two freezers and maybe Wi-Fi all at the same time. It's gonna be about 600 watt hours per hour of operation. So to make this comparable, anything that's gonna use about 600 watt hours per hour, we're gonna figure out exactly how long it would take to recharge off of solar. Really what we're trying to answer here is, how much solar do I need to have in order to recharge the batteries back to full while still running 600 watts? Those 600 watts could be anything, fridges, freezers, lights, fans, whatever, window air conditioner, doesn't matter. We're just gonna say 600 watts. And what it says here is we would need 2,140 watts of solar input. And unfortunately, that's kind of the weak point of the F3800 is the solar input. And it's really weird and it kind of drives me nuts, but here's how it works. They have two solar input ranges and the ranges refer to the voltage and that voltage is for the VMP and the VOC rating on your solar panel. Now the first range of voltage is from 11 to 32 volts. If the voltage input is between that with your VMP number, then you're going to only be allowed to put in up to 10 amps. Well, volts times amps equals watts. So as an example, if we have 25 volts coming in, 10 amps is what's gonna be allowed to go in. Volts times amps equals watts, that's gonna be 250 watts. Then the next voltage range is 32 volts to 60 volts. Now we cannot exceed 60 volts with the VOC number on the back of your solar panel. And that's the trickiest part, let me show you. So I got a couple of configurations here. So the way that this generally works is each one of these is gonna make about 21 volts at the VOC rating. Might be 22, it's gonna be up there. And so if we connect three of them together, we're over 60 volts, which means we will damage the charge controller. We can't have that. So we limit it to connecting to two of them. And that's gonna keep us around 42 volts if these are 21 volts each. This panel connects to this panel and we're just doing that by connecting the MC4 connectors behind here. And that's gonna give us 42 volts, which means we're gonna be in that upper parameter for the F3800. Remember, we wanna be above 32 volts because if we can do that, the charge controller will let in up to 25 amps. Volts times amps equals watt. But here's the kicker. Once you connect the solar panels to the F3800, the voltage drops and it drops to the VMP number on the back of the solar panel. So what ends up happening is that the VMP voltage is lower than 32 volts. Well, the charge controller, once it senses the voltage is below 32, it limits the amount of amps that can go in down to 10. So if we're at 31.9 volts, we're gonna be getting 10 amps max, even if we're sending 25 amps all the way to the charge controller. That's why we need to somehow have our VMP higher than 32 volts, but our VOC has to be lower than 60 volts. And honestly, even using 400 and 200 watt panels, I've just not been able to do it until now. There is one solar panel that I have found that's a 200 watt size, and you have to connect it up in a certain way to make sure you get the proper voltage and amperage. So that kit with those exact panels will be available at poweredportablesolar.com. So that way you can get the best solar input for the F3800. On a total side note, you can see I have solar panels on the roof of my house. I have solar panels on the roof of my RV. I have solar panels on a tilting ground mount that's permanent. I've made these temporary ground mounts out of wood from Home Depot. But one of the coolest things is the mounts that these panels are on. Here I have this solar panel leg system that I invented and have a patent pending on where it literally bolts on to the frame of any solar panel and they're fully adjustable in height. So we have micro and macro adjustments and we can even adjust the angle of the legs here. So I can make this whatever angle I want. And the beauty of this is this allows me to set up my solar panels quickly and easily in an emergency. And the materials should last decades, including going through sub-freezing temperatures as well as super hot temperatures. And then for storage, you can collapse the leg, fold this down and just put it in your garage or a shed or anything you want like that. So if you wanna find those, you can find them at poweredportablesolar.com as well. So in the end, the question is, how do we get the maximum amount of solar input into the F3800. Well, with the solar panels that are on the website, they have a special VOC and VMP 
The VMP allows it to stay above 32 volts and the VOC allows it to stay below 60 volts. And by pairing those together in a series parallel combination, which I'll have a diagram on how to put it all together, that allows you to get the maximum solar input for the system. Now it's plenty cool to run equipment or appliances directly off of these and you can just plug right into the side. But really what I wanna test is can we run my entire house off of this outlet? So we're gonna plug it in. Now, personally, the way that I choose to do this is through an interlock switch. Along with the interlock switch, I have a generator inlet. The reason I do it this way is one, it gives me the flexibility of using any solar generator or gas generator that I want. I'm not locked into one single system. But two, it allows me to run my entire electrical panel. And then I have a sub panel connected to my main electrical panel. So everything downstream of my main electrical panel gets power. All I have to do is take this NEMA 1450P, P standing for prong or for plug, and I'm gonna put it into this NEMA 1450R on this hub. Now that we've got that connected, we're gonna be running power to the generator inlet. This here is my generator inlet. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it right now, but see this has the prongs here in the wall outlet, and that's what we want, because we don't want the prongs to be here, because then we could accidentally get shocked if there's AC power on this cord. So it's all designed in a way to keep you safe. This connection is called an SS250R, and this is the SS250P. So all I do is I take this metal piece, I'm gonna put it in about the eight o'clock position, and then line up this right here in the 12 o'clock position, I push it in and twist lock it into place. Now this isn't going to get pulled out, it's not gonna fall out by accident, this is good to go. Now this outlet is directly linked through the wall there's a cable that goes up into the attic and over to my main electrical panel. Here inside my main electrical panel, you can see I have this metal plate in correspondence with this breaker. This breaker is directly attached to that generator inlet. So I can't turn this on right now, and that's by design for safety because I have grid power on. So if I want to be able to run my whole house, I have to first turn this off, flip up this metal plate, and then turn that over. Now I'm running my entire house off of the Anchor Solux F3800s. By the way, emergency preparedness is super important to me and an EMP and CME threat are very serious. Not sponsored in any way, I paid for it out of my own pocket. I use EMP shields to protect my house. This one is on my main electrical panel, so that way an EMP won't ruin everything in my house. I also use one on my vehicles. Everywhere that I can, I try to have EMP shields. I have coupon codes for you. I'll have them in the links down below. No obligation, but I think it's a good insurance policy to make sure that you're protected from grid attacks like that through EMPs and CMEs. You can see here, my fridge is running. My freezer is also running. My spare fridge is running. And so all of this is running my house right now. It looks like I'm pulling about 3000 watts collectively for the entire house, as well as all of these other cords here. So I'm still charging up another solar generator at 1800 watts. I got 600 watts on that crypto miner. I've got fans blowing to try to cool off the garage. There's a lot running on this. So with my current configuration of solar panels, I'm only getting about 500 watts input, and that's only on one of these inputs. So I need to get my solar set up on the second input, so that way I'm be pulling in about 1000 watts, and then I could double that, so I'm putting in solar on this one, and then I'd be pulling in about 2000 watts collectively, which will give me the ability to recharge 10 kilowatt hours of battery in a day. The reason that's good is because here I have 7.7 .7 kilowatt hours total capacity. On top of the crypto miner and the charger and everything like that, I'm using about 600 watts collectively to run the house. So I should be able to fully recharge the 7.7 .7 kilowatt hours of capacity as well as continue to run the essentials of my house, just the fridges, freezers, Wi-Fi, lights, fans, just the basics and I will be able to recharge this in a single day while still running everything. The major advantage of having a setup like this is the 12,000 watts of output, the balancing between them, as well as still having access to all of the outlets here while running split phase power to the house. Those all are very important features in a system, and that's one of the reasons why I like the Anchor Solix F3800 so much. I just wish that they would get better solar input. So all I'm saying is I need to make sure I have the right solar panels for my needs in order to make sure that this is gonna be a long lasting system that's gonna power my house. Really the next step for me is to add the expansion batteries to this, and hopefully I can get those here in the near future. So if you'd like to see a video where I expand this, please comment expansion down in the comments below, as 
as well, feel free to ask any questions. I'm here to help. So the main reasons why I like this is it has split face power with a single unit. I can get even more powerful split face power with two units. I can expand them with the batteries. I can still run my outlets here. I can have balancing between everything. All of those features are amazing. In the end, what this is all about is being prepared. I like to be prepared with solar. Um, unfortunately, there are so many storms and things going on right now where people are losing power. It's not just that the power gets knocked out while the storm's going on. Many people suffer without power for many weeks after that. The whole reason I make these videos is to help you understand how to be more prepared because these systems can be really confusing and I I want to share with you the real life experience of using them. So if you want to get direct access to me, you can go to patreon.com slash minuteman prep and I can chat with you. We can figure out exactly what system you need, get you any possible discounts that are available and help you be more prepared for coming power outages. Personally, I do believe we have a very serious EMP threat and that is always going on. And we are now getting into the cycle of the coronal mass ejection or the CMEs from the sun, which do have the potential to damage or take out the grid. There's no better time to be prepared than now. And hopefully this video helps you on that journey. If you'd like to see a video on how I took my house off grid with the solar generator and I lived for months just using that to live, then you can click that link right here. But in the meantime, be prepared. Appreciate you. I'll see you on the next video.